United States was warned that it may feel the effect of its own chip exports restrictions that it implemented against China. Kai Villan for the details. A Chinese Commerce Ministry spokesman warned that U.S. restrictions on selling advanced semiconductor chips to China benefits no one and will eventually backfire. The remarks came as U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said earlier this month that the United States will continue to export billions of dollars of less sophisticated chips to China, but never its most powerful ones. To this Chinese Commerce Ministry spokesman He Yadong said that this move will hurt the U.S. companies more. 我们注意到了相关的报道对中美半导体产业经贸往来人为设限to recall, the semiconductor sector has been the center of the trade war between the United States and China, aside from the one China policy issue regarding Taiwan. Reporting, this has been Kai Vilan, SMNI News. The Russian Foreign Ministry summoned U.S. envoy Lynn Tracy, setting the stage for the expulsion of two American diplomats, while Washington vowed to respond with retaliation. Jane Kudnita reports. Russia has kicked out two American diplomats, accusing them of collaborating with a spy. The diplomats Jeffrey Selin and David Bernstein allegedly had contact with a Russian who worked for the U.S. mission and was seen as an informant. Russia gave the U.S. seven days to send them home. The Russian citizen, Robert Shonov, worked for the U.S. Consulate General in Vladivostok for more than 25 years until 2021 when Moscow ordered the consulate staff's dismissal. In a video confession, Shonov admitted that Celine and Bernstein asked him to gather information about Russia's actions in Ukraine, the annexation of new areas, military preparations, and the 2024 presidential election. U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller claimed that Russia's action was wholly without merit and that Washington will respond accordingly. He also mentioned Russia's ongoing harassment of embassy staff and its own citizens. Meanwhile, the Foreign Ministry of Russia stated that, quote, unlawful activity by the U.S. diplomatic mission, including interference in the domestic affairs of the host state, is unacceptable and will be stopped with determination. Both countries have been doing this to their diplomatic representatives for years. It began when former U.S. President Barack Obama started shutting down consulates after accusing Russia of interfering in the 2016 presidential elections. Russia then retaliated in July 2017. Reporting, this has been Jane Kodnita. As the news. Hunter Biden, son of U.S. President Joe Biden, indicted or has been indicted for falsely denying drug use while buying guns by a special counsel, David Wise, who's been investigating him since 2018. Where Hill Parba has the details. Federal prosecutors indicted Hunter Biden on September 14 on charges of making false statements and illegally possessing a firearm following a plea deal that collapsed in July. These charges stemmed from an incident that happened five years ago when Hunter Biden purchased a revolver in Delaware while admitting to heavy drug use. The indictment includes two counts of making false statements. Hunter Biden, 53 years old, allegedly misrepresented his drug use on the forms he filled out when purchasing the firearm. In addition to these false statement charges, he also faces a third charge for illegally possessing the gun. This is the first time that a son of a sitting U.S. president has been indicted on federal criminal charges. If convicted, these charges could potentially result in up to 10 years of imprisonment on 
on each of two counts of making false statements and five for possessing it as someone with drug addiction. The charges were filed by Justice Department Special Counsel David Wise, who has been investigating Hunter Biden since 2018. The presidential son's indictment comes after a plea deal between him and Wise fell apart earlier this year. To recall, the earlier deal reached in July, Hunter Biden had agreed to plead guilty to two minor tax charges. In exchange, he would have received probation as he had already settled his tax obligations and penalties. Moreover, the felony gun charge would have been suspended if Hunter Biden completed a pre-trial diversion program which typically includes counseling or rehabilitation. However, the plea deal fell apart due to disagreement regarding whether Hunter Biden would be immune from any charges related to his business dealings in countries like Ukraine and China, which were also under investigation by the special counsel. The tax charges were dropped, however, David Weiss indicated that new charges might be brought in another state too. Reporting, this has been Verhil Parba, as a News. A body cam footage caused outrage after a cop was heard laughing while talking about an Indian student who died after getting hit by a police car. The said cop was also heard saying that the student, uh, in a quote, has limited value. Andrea Santos files this report. Uh, I think she went up on the hood, hit the windshield, then when he hit the brakes, flew off the car. But she is dead. <laughs> this was the voice of Seattle Police Officer Daniel Oderer, recorded by a body cam. Oderer was responding to an incident where 23-year-old student Jan Vicandula was killed near her university. In the body cam footage, uh, the officer was also heard suggesting that the life of the Indian student had limited volume and that the city should just write a check. No, it's a regular person. Yeah. Yeah, just write a check. Just... Yeah, <laughs> what? $11,000. She was... 26 anyway. She had limited value. The officer earlier said his comments were taken out of context. John Vicandula was a graduate student at the Seattle campus of Northeastern University. On January 23, she was hit and killed by a police car while crossing on the street. A police investigation report said Seattle Police Officer Kevin Dave was driving the patrol car going 119 kilometers per hour that hit Kandula's body, which was thrown more than 30 meters. An officer order was the one who was called to the incident, and his body cam recorded the audio from a call he made to another colleague named Mike Solan. Later, it was found out that Officer Oderer was the Vice President of the Seattle Police Officers Guild, while Mike Solan, the colleague he was talking on the phone, was the Guild's President. Meanwhile, the Seattle Police Department stated that they discovered a conversation between Oderer and Solan from an employer who listened to it in the routine course of business. The said employee, whose name was not disclosed, was reportedly concerned about the nature of the statements and escalated it up to the chain of command. The issue was headed over the Office of Police Accountability to investigate police misconduct. The video earned massive outrage. Meanwhile, Jan Vicandula's family stated that they are saddened to hear insensible comments from the officer on the body cam footage. The Indian consulate in San Francisco also demanded an investigation. John Vicandula arrived in Seattle from Bengaluru, India in 2021 to receive a master's degree for science and information systems at the College of Engineering. She was supposed to graduate in December of this year. But she is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just write a check. Yeah, <laughs> what? Eleven thousand dollars. She was twenty-six anyway. She had limited value. Reporting. This is Andrea Santos, SMN News.